main principles of microservices architecture what are those principles that we should keep in mind while developing the microservices architecture while developing any of the microservices in our organization or for personal purpose this is the video number 11 under the series about microservices interview q and a this is the playlist to check out other videos and good topics that are there that will help a lot in while you are going for the interviews and uh, i'm covering all the questions that are possible if you anything coming in your mind put that in comment section i'll cover that as well this all together is part of another bigger initiative that we have like we are covering mock uh, De java backend developer mock interviews so this is the set one where we are covering different topic data structure spring framework database microservices and kafka also and this is the microservice question first one what are the main principles of microservices architecture other i think if you check on the video, uh, youtube channel these are the things that i already have covered okay and other topics you can see the list like a spring boot database java i'm organizing it at one place so that if you have this repository handy handy you will get all the set of questions and related links as well to help you a lot in your interview preparation so let's uh, i hope you are checking this out the links are given in the description and comment box as well so let's see what are those principles so when we talk about the principles uh, we can group the principles and what are the best practices that are there under 10 points these are the ones first one is the single responsibility principle second one is the independence and centralization decentralization api based communication decentralized data management we have fault tolerance and resiliency continuous de delivery and deployment that is ci cd devops culture promotes service de discovery and load balancing poly polyglot persistence and observability and monitoring these are the 10 thumb rules or principles that should be followed to have a best possible best architecture around the microservices so let's go ahead and see couple of points around each of the services with example so first one is the single responsibility principle this principle says that each microservice should have a single well-defined responsibility or specific business capability this principle promotes separation of concerns ensuring that each service handles one specific aspect of the business logic let's consider an example of the e-com site e-com like flipkart or amazon so if i see this business there are certain functionalities like first one it can be user management second one like product management can be there right order management is yet another thing that can be the business functionality payment integrations and payment management is the one service can be there so these whatever categorization i can see from the business perspective that should be that should be implemented as a microservice basically so if i have to manage the user this does not have to be directly relation with the product management that is there so user management can hand be handled independently from the product order and payment micro payment management so there will be four microservices built independently and we can say these are a uh, single responsibility for each of that one they are independently built right we'll cover more principles uh, we'll use this example in further principles to say uh, to cover how they are related to that one so let's see next one that is independence and decentralization microservices should be independently deployable built and scalable as well they should not depend on each other for deployment or operational stability as well as development also this promotes decentralization of development deployment and data management the four microservices that we saw in the e-com side so when we are developing each of like we can form four different teams four different teams can have a discussion about the contracts about each of these one and they can be built independently uh, they can be deployed independently and if there is a feature change or anything coming in future also that we can make that change in the one service and it can be built deployed and scaled independent of any other service that is there so that is the fee that is what it says the independence and decentralization so it should not be the case right you have built the 
different micro services but still they are tightly coupled with this, with each other and uh, whenever any new feature request is coming into this one you were saying that it is de highly dependent on other microservice and uh, until unless this microservice goes to deployment this cannot go to that one so this type tight coupling must be uh, avoided uh, otherwise you are not following the microservices architecture basically so it should not be the case like if any feature development is coming so that all of that should happen in parallel uh, whenever any new feature requirement is coming in and new feature you are adding it that needs the that even if it needs the dependency on this one so it should go with the feature flag basically so whenever they are calling they can pass some feature and based on that it can enable that feature but it should not block the deploy, uh, development and deployment for this one that is what says the independence and decentralization api based communication so microservices communicate with each other through well defined apis often over http grpc amqp and graphql and this decouples services and allows them to evolve independently so these are the different microservices right they are they are taking care of the indi uh, individual business functionality but when user when user is coming in they are requesting to this one there is an interface in here right they are requesting to this one and internally they must communicate with each other to serve the purpose that user is calling for this one like let's say user is coming into the portal they will log into the system right that is the first functionality they will see the product features they will order something they will do the payment right all of that is happening from one so whatever product payment and order we are doing it always needs the user information so they will call that user service from in here so that communication must happen there so and how that communication is happening via rest based or uh, rest based apis are there grpc is there graphql is there Th those protocols are there that is how uh, they communicate with each other the second uh, the next one is that decentralized data management each microservices manage its own data typically stored in a separate database and this ensure that services are loosely coupled and changes to the data model of one service do not affect one others so we saw all of these microservices uh, we are not saying that it's just only about the business logic and business functionality we are talking about the database also each of these services if they need to store something they have their own database to store that one so uh, and this this gives a lot of flexibility basically so if uh, and there are a lot of databases and different kinds of databases available out there right so we can have different like let's say it, it it is a sql database it can be no sql databases it can be redis it can be any other thing based on the functionality that it provides and what database is best suited for this one so microservices architecture gives us the decentralized data ma management functionality also and make sure that two microservices are not connecting to the same databases that will in longer run basically create the problem next is the fault tolerance and resilience microservices should be designed with fault tolerance in mind ensuring that failure of one service does not bring down the entire system techniques like circuit breaker retries and fallbacks are often employed so if this service is calling to this service and something goes wrong with this one so this service should be able to retry that one or it should have a some fallback mechanism but whatever further in the chain that it's it's a chain of call right so it, this fault should be contained at this place only it should not bring down the entire system that we have there are mechanisms uh, that can be employed to do these things circuit breaker it rise fallbacks and others are there next is the continuous delivery and deployment that is ci ci cd Microservices architecture supports continuous integration and deployment since services are independent they can be developed tested and deployed independently allowing for faster release cycle this is the one thing that ci cd integration is very easy with the microservices architecture thus related to this one is the devops culture microservices architecture encourages a strong devops culture where development and operations team collaborate closely and the principle this one a principle inside principle right you build it you run it the devops culture principle is often adopted but teams are responsible for the entire life cycle of their services so if four services are there and the these four services are being developed by the different teams so 
they are being developed by four different teams and they will build it they will deploy it they will scale it so there won't be need of a single team that each of team are teams are building the application and any other team has a responsibility of deploying and scaling that one so that responsibility is within the team only so this single team will be there they can build the platform that each of these team can be can use that one but uh, any problem coming in or anything so each team has to take care of that one so this principle you build it you run it you take care of the issues that are there next is the service discovery and load balancing microservices often use service discovery mechanism to locate other services dynamically load balancing distributes incoming requests across multiple instances of services to ensure high availability and reliability so single instance of the service cannot serve the whole lot of requests that come right so there has to be multiple instances of this one so whoever is calling so let's say this is the service that is calling this one and this has one instance now uh, later on there are 10 instances of this one so how this service will get to know about that one that is where we have service discovery and load balancing coming into picture so there is one place so all of these instances that are newly coming into picture they will register with one service uh, one platform and this one will be communicating to to this one and this will know at any point in time like how many instances are there and which one it needs to connect to so load balancer is there to distribute all those requests among the, all the instances that are there so client does not have to worry about how many instances are down the line available okay so the next is the polyglot persistence so in a way we covered it uh, and at a in a while microservices allow the use different types of databases depending on the specific needs of each service this is known as polyglot persistence whereas different services use different data storage technologies best suited for their requirements so we saw the four of the services right earlier so maybe that mysql is the best suited for this one here we have no sql database uh, like mongodb amazon dynamo db is there so that can be used with this and maybe this is a, this is best suited with the redis so that can be used uh, without any issue uh, with that one along with the per polyglot persistence uh, we can have the polyglot language as well so let's say we have a very big team and one team is like couple of uh, resources that are there their expertise in java another resources are there like they are expert in js another resource is there that is expert in python so we can form the team of the java js and python differently they these services can be built like this can be built in the java this can be built in javascript this can be built in the python there is no issue at all because they will be communicating via rest apis or http protocols that are there and that does not depend uh, on which language they are implemented in so polyglot persistence as well language can be followed very easily observability and monitoring is the last pointer so this should be very uh, well established like uh, when we have monolithic application so we have only one application one place logging and all that so complexity is a lot less when we have microservices are created thousands of services spawn at particular time so whatever logs monitoring and tracing that i have to do that also needs to be done very carefully so logging monitoring and tracing are essential to manage and debug microservices and observability provides insights into the system's health performance and behavior at any point in time so this must be set up carefully and well tested and whatever alarms and uh, flags they are putting in they should be they must be correct so that they are not for uh, generating false alarms basically and uh, regularly there should be chaos testing and all that to uh, test the resiliency of the systems so that is all about the 10 microservices architecture principles that must be followed go through it have any questions around it put that in comment section i'm happy to discuss that last slide that we cover let's see the related question what are the main differences between microservices and monolithic architecture let's go through it and make sure that you have proper understanding before going to the interview because uh, these are the basic questions that are coming can you explain the concept of eventual consistency in the context of microservices how do you handle inter-service communication in a microservices architecture? What strategies can you use to manage distributed transaction in microservices architecture? Describe a situation where microservices might not be the best architectural choice. 
how do you ensure data integrity and consistency across microservices so these are the basic questions around microservices make sure that you have an understanding around that one So along with this microservices interview series there is a microservices architecture video series that i created while back there are a set of 40 42 videos around this one that covers a lot about microservices there are small videos you can go ahead and topic wise you can check this individually if you have covered this thing and got the practical understanding about when i'm sure in the interviews there won't be a single question that is missed around it so make sure that you have covered this one also all the links are given in the description comment section make sure you have uh, gone through that one i hope you like this one if this is the case make sure you subscribe it like it and share it with your friends i'll see you in the next one till then take care bye bye